Hey everyone, Board Game Brody here with Meeple Mountain. As you can see, still no shelves, no board game table, but I'm here with you to list the top six games that you wish that you owned. I released a poll to board gamers like yourselves and asked them their top six games that they wish that they owned. And these are the results. Number six, Kingdom Death Monster by Kingdom Death Games, published in 2015. But still relevant today, Kingdom Death Monster is a cooperative adventure miniatures game. It's set in a world with hardly no natural resources. And the game is rated at an 8.6 on Board Game Geek. In the game, you fight monsters, craft weapons, and gear, and develop your settlement to ensure survival. The game is a game for up to four players who play through scenarios that form a campaign. I haven't played the game myself, but from what I researched, people like this game because of the awesome miniatures, the fact that there is a ton of game packed into this, campaigns can run for a long time, giving you a feeling of investment into this game. People tend to like this dark theme, and also maybe for the fact that you can play through the game solo. But You Tie My Shoes from Board Game Geek may say it best. The game is a masterpiece in every way. It combines a miniature modeling, character specification, settlement building, and tactical combat in a complex but fluid way. It is not a streamlined or simple game by any shape or form, so people will either hate it or see it as a grail game. Again, number six is Kingdom Death Monster. Let's go to number five, which is Star Wars Rebellion by Fantasy Flight Games. Yet another game I haven't played, not because it doesn't interest me, but Star Wars Rebellion is a war-type miniatures game that uses area majority and dice. You play on either the Galactic Empire side or the Rebel Alliance. The player who either finds the finds and obliterates the Rebel's base or uh, inspire the galaxy for full-scale revolt against the Empire. From what I can tell, players like this game because it tends to end with some epic scenes. The IP is solid, the mechanics line up really well with the IP, and it makes for a great game with intense moments. The game is not cheap, but it does include a lot of Star Wars miniatures. But number five, again, is Star Wars Rebellion by Fantasy Flight Games. Number four is War of the Rings, the Collector's Edition, yet another strategic war game in fantasy setting. One player takes control of the free people and the other controls the shadow armies. Players can win the game in different ways, like a military victory by either, by either side or by doing specific things by different sides. Different choices or actions are determined by the roll of the dice. These actions range from personal character actions to political or military action. Of course, the collector's edition adds in everything the game offers all in one box, and the game is updated from its first edition. Big Bad Lex on Board Game Geek said it, it's an excellent game that has been given the Rolls Royce treatment. The game is a great experience with a production that is jaw dropping. The game also relies heavy on its IP as in the Lord of the Rings. And when reading over the comments about the game on Board Game Geek, there's just plenty of comments that just say, the best game ever or just amazing. So maybe it's the IP, the table presence, the production, or a combination of all those, but it's number four in the games that you wish that you owned. War of the Rings Collector Edition by Fantasy Flight Games. Number three, Sleeping Gods by Red Raven Games. This is the newest game on the list, which just shows how good these other games actually are. Is Sleeping Gods just the newest game that everyone wants because it's new? Or will it last with time and do something that these other games on this list doesn't do? Sleeping Gods is a 2021 release. It's a cooperative campaign style game for up to four players. You and your crew are on the, a steamship in 1929 and you become lost in a strange world. You explore this world and continue with a huge story driven game with adventure. Hidden treasures and vivid characters. Your choices during the game affect the characters and the plot of the game, which ultimately can help or hinder your chances of getting home. The game is probably on this list because it's a newer game. It's a story-driven game, so players feel like they can affect the flow of the game and have more control of it. Many players are mid-campaign and say it's so much fun and still has life, meaning they still want to play it. 
Pablo here on Board Game Geek says, great game with excellent artwork and components. The story is the main reason that you play this sandbox style game. If you like adventuring sandbox exploration games, this is simply an amazing game. And maybe for that reason, it's number three on this list. Again, Sleeping Gods of Red Raven Games. Number two, Brass Birmingham. This game is one game that matches your list of games that you wish you owned with my list of games that I wish I owned. Brass Birmingham is an economic strategy game set in the Industrial Revolution between 1770 and 1870. Players develop, build, and establish industries and networks to exploit low or high market demands. Players get two actions per turn to do one of the six actions. The game also has a deluxe edition, which of course brings some nice components to this great game. This game has board game geek comments like, great economic game with lots of crunchy decisions. The game still has a simplicity component to it, but it is still a complex game. Moradin from Poland says this on board game geek. Excellent game with a lot of economic aspects. It handles very well two things that many other games fall into. First of all, even though you draw cards, there is less randomness because having eight cards in your hand all the time allows you to change plans and gain points. The second thing is that there is quite a bit of player interaction, so this is definitely not a game for multiplayer solitaire. You can interact not only through the market, which is what many other games do, but you can also use the connections and the resources on the buildings of other players. This presents some really interesting decisions because you have to consider if you are helping your opponents more than you are helping yourself. And that's why Brass Birmingham might be on this list at the number two spot. All right, and now your top game that you wish that you own. Number one, Nemesis by Awaken Realms. This is a horror miniatures game that is a semi-cooperative campaign game with a lot of dice rolling. In the game, players all control a crew member that have a unique set of skills. And players will each have their own unique personal deck of cards. During the game, you and your team need to complete objectives given at the beginning of the game, ultimately trying to get back to Earth in one piece. But you will find swarms of intruders and poor physical conditions of your ship and different agendas for each of the crew members in this game. The game includes cinematic moments, which leads to some never forgotten epic moments. Dusty27 from Board Game Geek says this, the different objectives create great tension. I greatly enjoy that the aliens being true threats and running away being a valid tactic in the game. The components are the best I have seen yet in a game. The tray to store it, the magnificent. The sun drop is great. If I ha was pressed to put mo to make a negative remark, it would be that the sun drop on the crew is a bit bland and light. However, I found this a wonderful opportunity to use some colored shades to spice up the spacesuits. It was quick, easy, and cheap, and they look great. One thing I find needs to be explained to the group at the outmost is how fragile the ship is. If you have even one crew member that doesn't make or doesn't want to, to help uh, keep it afloat, others will likely have to pick up that slack. Also, the noise roll you make if, is for the noise you hear when moving up. These aliens know they have a great chance against you and are simply picking their encounters. Played 12 games and in four months with the core game, love the Kickstarter extras. Others say oozing with atmosphere and tension or the best semi-cooperative game out there. Amazing immersion into the theme. And maybe that's all why this game is number one, the number one game that you wish that you owned. I do have to say I have been convinced to want to play all of these games. But the main problem is that all of these games are high end. They are very pricey. So if anyone owns one of these games and lives in Nebraska, let's game. Anyways, what do you think of this list? Would your own list be drastically different? Let me know in the comments. If you're curious what my list looks like, then click the link below as it might be closer to your own list than you think. 
I will be continuing with these top six lists, so please like this video, subscribe to the channel, all that good stuff, and I will be back with another list soon. Again, this is Board Game Brody. I hope you enjoyed this video. Stick around and check out some other board game reviews to see what you might want to get to the table.